Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are still in Chapter 4, Chemical Bonding. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 4.1, the Lewis Structure, Part 4 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to explain the exception to the octet rule, which consists of the incomplete octet, the expanded octet, and the odd number electron. For the incomplete octet, the central atom will have less than 8 electron. For the expanded octet, the central atom will have more than 8 electron. Meanwhile, for the odd number electron, the central atom will have odd number, which is 5 or 7 electron, respectively, in the central atom. For the learning outcome of F and H, we're going to look about that in part 3a and 3b, as well as in part 5. So in this video, let us focus on part 4 of the video first. So for the exception to octet rule number 1, which is the incomplete octet, the incomplete octet can occur when the central atom has less than 8 electron in its balance shell. So the example of central atom is going to be the beryllium, which is BE, boron, capital B, and then aluminium. So these three elements here do not achieve octet configuration even after sharing electron with the other atoms. So, for example, number one, we have the beryllium dichloride. And for example, number two, we have very, uh, boron trihydride here. So, for BeCl2, when we draw the Lewis structure, okay, so you can use the similar method as what you have learned in the previous video. For example, beryllium, you have two electron, and then two Cl, you're going to have two times seven electron, so 14. So, the total number of valence electron going to be 16 electron. And the beryllium is going to be the central atom. Okay, and then we're going to make a bond in between beryllium and chlorine. Since we have two chlorine, so we're going to put it on the right hand side and the left hand side. And then because we make two single bond here, so two electron and two electron, we have used up four electron. So we are left with 12 electron. So the 12 electron here will be used in order to uh, give electron at the terminal atom. So we're going to have 12 electrons, so we're going to put 6 and 6 here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, same goes to here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So minus 12 electrons. So all the electrons have been used up. And as a result, this electron here will have 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, the chlorine here will also have 2, 4, 6, 8, but the beryllium here has only 4 electrons at the central atom, 2 on the right hand side and 2 on the left hand side. Okay, Even though it has 4 electrons, but it is stable Okay, because it does not follow the normal octet rule, but it follows the incomplete octet. Okay? And as what you can see here, the beryllium only surrounded by 4 electrons and not 8. Okay? However, they are stable because you know that when you count the formal charge of beryllium, formal charge here, so the number of valence electrons of beryllium is 2, right? And then, lone pairs electron it doesn't have any, so 0, minus 1 and 2 bonding pairs. So the charge, the formal charge of beryllium is 0. And then the formal charge of chlorine, if you were to count that, you're going to get 7 valence electron minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 minus 1 bonding pair. So it's going to be 0 here. So 0, 0, and 0. So the summation of the formal charge is going to be 0 and it has the lowest formal charge for each atom in the molecule. So you know that the atom, the molecule here is stable and it follows the incomplete octet. Okay, and this is how you're going to prove this. Okay, and then for example number two, similarly, if you were to draw the Lewis structure, finally you will get the structure to be like this, which is B, H, H, and H here. So as what you can see at the central atom boron, it only have two, four, six electrons. Okay, instead of eight. However, they are still stable. And this is the example of elements that follows the incomplete octet. Okay, so if you want to prove by yourself, you can always draw the Lewis structure again 
and then you can figure out that this is the step one. Now we're going to look into the expanded octet. For the expanded octet, uh, the central atom will have more than eight electron in its valence shell. Okay, even though they have eight or more than eight, but they are essentially stable because when we count the formal charge, the formal charge is going to be zero as well. So when expanding the octet, the central atom will uses the empty d orbital available at its valence shell. Okay, and for this reason. The expanding, uh, the idea of expanded octet can only be done by the non-metal in period three and above. For example, the phosphorus as well as the element of sulfur. Okay, and then the atoms without the empty d orbital, such as the elements in period two, will not be able to expand their octet. So expanded octet can only happen for non-metal in period 3 and above, okay, because they have 3D empty orbital, okay, and as what you can see here, the phosphorus are located in, phosphorus as well as the sulfur are, are located in group 15 and group 16 respectively, and they are in period 3, so they have empty 3D orbital and because of this reason they can expand their, um, their electrons at the central atom so that they have more than 8 electrons in which in phosphorus here it can have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 electrons here. Okay. Meanwhile for the sulfur here you're going to get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons for the central atom of sulfur. Okay. And even though they have 10 electrons and 12 electrons, the molecule here are essentially stable. And again, you can always draw the Lewis structure, for example, phosphorus as well as 5-chlorine in order to prove yourself that this structure uh, is existed. And then if you were to count the formal charge as well, you can see that the formal charge of phosphorus is going to be 5 minus zero lone pairs circling the phosphorus, so minus zero, but then it have five bonding pairs. So the formal charge of phosphorus is going to be zero here. And then the formal charge of chlorine is okay, going to be seven minus one, two, three, four, five, six, six lone pair electron minus one bonding pair. So the charge here is going to be zero as well. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and also 0. So the structure here is stable, but it has the expanded of that. Okay, so that's the idea. Now we're going to look into the odd electron molecule. So for the odd electron molecule, it happens when the central atom came from the odd numbered group. For example, the nitrogen in group 15 and chlorine in group 17. So they are odd numbered, 7 and 5 here. Okay. And it happens when the central atom, for example, the nitrogen here, has the odd number of electrons in its valence shell. So as what you can see here, the total number of nitrogen is, the total number of electrons circling the nitrogen going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, because one bond here represent, representing two electrons and then another two electrons. So you're going to have seven electrons in nitrogen. And for the chlorine here, if you were to draw the Lewis structure, you're going to get the structure to be like this. And if you were to look at the chlorine, and if you were to look at the chlorine here, you're going to get two, four, five, Six, seven electrons. So seven electrons for chlorine. So they have the odd number. Dombo yang gan jil. Okay. And you can always prove yourself by finding the Lewis structure by calculating the total number of valence electrons. And then oxygen here will have six electrons here. So the total number of valence electrons that you're going to get is 11 electrons. 
Okay, so. So the bonding between nitrogen and oxygen is going to be minus 2. So 9 electron. So we need to complete the terminal atom first, which is the oxygen. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So minus 6. Okay, so we have balance of 3. So the balance of 3 electron is going to be placed at the nitrogen. And then in order to make it more uh, stable, the two lone pairs here will be inserted here in order to reduce the formal charge. So you're going to get the structure to be like this. And this is how the nitrogen is going to have two, four, six, seven electrons at the center, at the central atom, nitrogen, in which it's going to be the odd electron molecule. Okay, and the formal charge here will essentially equal to zero and it is stable because formal charge of nitrogen can be calculated by five, which is the valence electron, minus the lone pair electron, one, two, three, minus bonding pair one and two. So the formal charge here is going to be zero. Similarly to oxygen there. So the formal charge of oxygen is going to be 6 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, lone pair electron, minus bonding pair 1 and 2. So the charges here are going to be 0 as well. So they are essentially stable, but they have the odd electron molecule and the odd number of electrons in the central atom. Okay. Now we're going to look into the example number 1 where we have to determine the exception of octet rule adopted by this following species. So first we have the ALCL3. So the first thing first, you need to draw the Lewis structure. So in order to draw the Lewis structure, you need to count the total number of valence electrons. So the total number of valence electrons of aluminium is going to be 3. So 1 times 3 equals 3. And then we have 3 chlorine atoms, which is 3Cl equal to 3 times 7, equal to 21. And then the total number of valence electrons that we're going to get is 24 electrons. So between aluminium and Cl3, aluminium is the more electropositive. So aluminium is going to be the central atom. Okay, And then this aluminium here will make 3 bond with Cl. So we're going to minus that with 6 because three bonds are being made and one bond represents two electrons. So we have 18 electrons here. Then the 18 electron here will be used in order to make up the terminal atom to make it octet. So we have 6, 12, 18. So we have used up all the electrons that we have. Okay. So lastly, the structure that we're going to get is to be something like this. Okay. And then, as what you can see here, the central atom aluminium will only have two, four, six electrons at the center. Okay. And the formal charge here, aluminium, three minus zero lone pairs. Minus 1, 2, 3. So the formal charge here is still 0. So you know that it is stable. So aluminium has 6 electrons at the center, which is less than 8. And then we can say that it's going to be an incomplete octet. Alright. And now we're going to move on to the IF5. So for IF5, as usual, we need to count the total number of valence electrons. So iodine, we have one atom of iodine multiplied by seven valence electrons, so we have seven. Five fluorine, so five times seven equal to 35. So seven plus 35 is going to be 42 electrons. So in between iodine and fluorine, iodine is more electropositive. Okay, so they are located in the same group, which is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, but the fluorine is the more electronegative. This one is more electro-positive. 
Okay, so iodine going to be at the center, and then it's going to make up five bond with fluorine. One, two, three, four, and then five. So minus ten here. So we left with thirty-two electron. The thirty-two electron will then be used in order to fill in the octet at the terminal atom. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So six multiplied by five atom. We're gonna minus that with thirty electron. So we're gonna left with two electron here. The two electron here will then be used in order to complete the octet in the central atom, which is one and two. Okay. So the structure that we're gonna get is to be something like this. Which is IF5 with two with five bonding pairs, one, two, three, four, five, and one lone pair here at the central atom iodine. So as what you can see here, the iodine will have one, will have one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electron at the center. Okay, so you know that when it has a twelve electron at the center but not it, you know that it's going to have an expanded octet because it has greater than it. This one will be lesser than it. So it's going to be incomplete, but this one greater than it, it's going to be expanded octet. And you can know that this is stable because when you count the formal charge of iodine, it's going to be 7 minus 1, 2, on per electron minus one two three four five so the formal charge of iodine here gonna be zero and if you were to, to count the formal charge of fluorine you know that you're gonna get seven because of the valence electron minus one two three four five six minus one so you're gonna get zero as well so you know that the structure here is stable and it adopts the expected that. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!